Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. On today's Smart 7, Labour faces storm over Diane Abbott ban. Trump awaits New York jury verdict and much more. It's Thursday 30th of May. It's International Potato Day and happy birthday, Edina Menzel. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. Wednesday saw more electioneering in a campaign that seems set to feature every conceivable mode of transport. We had Lib Dem leader Ed Davey make all the papers, splashing off a paddle board as Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and a large press contingent took the sleeper train to Penzance. Rishi had a busy day, rejecting an overture from Nigel Farage to discuss a voting agreement with Reform UK and criticising Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer over his handling of the Diane Abbott issue. He also took time to take aim at universities as he talked up his new apprenticeship-based plan. University is great and it makes a fantastic option for many people, but it's not the only option. I'm not someone who believes that you have to go to university. And what we do know is that there are university degrees that are letting young people down. Starmer was busy at the University of Worcester, where he and Shadow Health Secretary West Streeting were speaking about the NHS and their plan to cut waiting lists. The Labour leader says it's unforgivable that the Tories have left the NHS in a worse state than when they took power, and Streeting says it would be madness to hand the matches back to the arsonists. The NHS is broken, it's going through what is objectively the worst crisis in its history, and we've seen 14 years of chaos, mismanagement and bad political leadership that led to record waiting lists before the pandemic and rising waiting lists since the pandemic. Labour's smooth start to the campaign, which saw them reach a new high in a YouGov poll on Wednesday, is at risk of coming off the rails, as internal politics appear to be rocking the boat. Diane Abbott, the first black female MP to be elected, had the Labour whip suspended over remarks she made in a letter to The Observer last year. But as the election loomed, there appeared to be a coordinated Labour plan, which saw the whip restored to her on Tuesday, and it was then expected she would make a dignified exit. However, a leak to the Times sparked a controversy with reports that she was to be banned from running as a Labour candidate. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer says there's no question of any decision to ban her from standing. The process that we were going through uh, ended with the restoration of the whip. Um, so she's a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party and no decision has been taken barring her. Abbott addressed supporters in Hackney on Wednesday and said she was shocked by the story, but that she intends to continue as an MP for as long as is possible. I have been selected by my local party members, many of whom are here today, but the National Party is insisting that I be banned. Donald Trump's election interference trial in Manhattan wrapped up on Wednesday. The judge spent the best part of an hour giving guidelines to the jury on the questions they needed to consider, and then they headed off to the jury room to begin their deliberations. They requested additional information on some key elements, including a transcript of David Pecker and Michael Cohen's testimony. They then went home for the evening and are due back on Thursday morning, and for once Donald didn't sound too optimistic as he left court. Mother Teresa could not be discharged. These charges are rigged. The whole thing is rigged. The whole country's a mess between the borders and fake elections. And you have a trial like this where the judge is so conflicted he can't breathe. South Africans went to the polls on Wednesday in a general election that is expected to see the ruling ANC lose its majority for the first time since 1994. The election saw 70 parties competing for votes, and early estimates put turnout at over 60%, with long queues still waiting to vote after the polls closed. The final results are not expected to be declared until Sunday, and the president will be elected two weeks later. This voter in Johannesburg feels it's time for a shake-up and that a coalition government could be better for the country. We are 
hoping that they will not have like a majority like before so there can be a lot of accountability because the biggest issue we've always had with the ANC is around corruption uh, so we're hoping that this will bring a more balanced share of power. Still to come on today's Smart 7, football fires up the managerial merry-go-round and Brad Pitt and George Clooney are back together right after this. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Recently, I asked Mint Mobile's legal team if big wireless companies are allowed to raise prices due to inflation. They said yes. And then when I asked if raising prices technically violates those onerous two-year contracts, they said, what the f*** are you talking about, you insane Hollywood ass. So to recap, we're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows full terms at mintmobile.com. Welcome back. It may be the end of the football season, but it's just the start of the managerial merry-go-round as top clubs shuffle their personnel. We're still waiting on a final decision from Man United on Eric Ten Hag, and Chelsea appear to be in talks with Leicester manager Enzo Moresca. But things are moving more quickly at the European Super Clubs, with Bayern Munich announcing Vincent Kompany as their new manager after they paid a reported £10 million release fee from newly relegated Burnley. And European giants Barcelona have also landed a new boss, the wonderfully named Hansi Flick, who was Bayern coach before the short residence residency of Thomas Tuchel. Flick is looking forward to the new challenge. Yes, it's a big honour and also a dream for me to sign my contract here in Barcelona to work for this club, for this amazing club and I am happy to start. The Brockman family are coming for Christmas. Great news, although you may be racking your brain to remember who exactly the Brockman family are. They were the lovable family at the centre of BBC sitcom Outnumbered, which ran for five seasons and finished up in 2014. There's only been one Christmas special since then in 2016, but now a new one is on the way for Christmas 2024. The dad of the family, Hugh Dennis, says it's going to be quite different, especially since the kids are now grown-ups. I'm really looking forward to it, and we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be strange, isn't it? Because yeah. it's sort of, I don't think we live together anymore, you know, as a family. <laughs> and the coming, uh, it's, uh, you know. A different yeah. But there's lots of different stuff to reflect, isn't it? I mean, one of the great things about the show was it actually did sort of seem to me to reflect life. George Clooney and Brad Pitt are back together after 16 years in a new movie called Wolf's. Yep, it's not wolves, it's wolves, as the two superstars team up in an action comedy about two lone wolf figures who specialise in cleaning up tricky situations. They always work alone until they're forced to work together with hilarious consequences, as they say in the papers. Anyway, it's written and directed by Spider-Man director John Watts, and it's due to hit cinemas on September 20th. Where'd you get the drugs? I don't know what you're talking about. Where did you get the drugs? Talk. There's an art to this you may not realize. What the art is saying the same thing over and over? Let's see your technique. I showed you my luggage card trick. Admit it. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Where'd you get the drugs? You've been listening to the Smart Seven. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes. We'll give you the world. Mount Sinai South Nassau in Oceanside is proud to be the only hospital on the south shore of Long Island rated high performing in maternity care by U.S. News and World Report. That means mothers who delivered at Mount Sinai South Nassau had fewer early deliveries, fewer C-sections, and fewer newborn complications than other hospitals with higher rates of breastfeeding and other positive outcomes. To learn more about why you should consider Mount Sinai South Nassau to give birth, visit southnassau.org slash maternity or call 877 south Nassau. Nassau.